everybody, and welcome to episode 32 of All About African Violets. All About African Violets is musically sponsored by Ted Yoder. You can hear and purchase his wonderful music on his website at tedyoder.com. It's also available from iTunes. Hi, everybody. Come on into my sunroom. Have a seat. I'm happy to see you. I, uh, I'm, I'm very casual today. Forgive me. I have my favorite green shirt on. I've worn it for a while. I figured maybe you guys might be missing it. And uh, I'm literally just in from snow blowing the driveway. Winter is here in Chicagoland. Finally, it was brutally cold this week. Again, very, very cold temperatures. Wind chills of 20 below zero. That's Fahrenheit. For those of you not in the US, um, you had to convert that to Celsius, but it's really cold. Uh, it was warmer today, um, warm enough obviously to snow, so I did go and get the driveway done. So I look a little, I think I look a little rumpled, a little more rumpled than usual. My hair may be standing on end more than usual. Anyway, thank you for the questions. You guys are great. I have to tell you, I had, I had this whole thing planned out of what I was going to do this week, and then you left me wonderful questions on the website, and so I switched things up a little bit and I want to try to answer as many of your questions as I can today. So normally we would have done this last week, but you know, gotta go with the flow. Well, Lori in Maine said, you mentioned this one's haloing. And she said, a, a walkthrough of pH uh, test and fertilizer, fertilizer measurement and mixing maybe. What steps do you take to decide on possible cause remedy for haloing? Haloing, my, she says her remedy so far is yanking off the offending older leaves and crossing her fingers. Well, that works really well, actually, if they are older leaves. You'll see <clears throat> a little bit later I went at the look on the stands of the plant that I mentioned last week that was haloing. Um, I'm going to show it to you guys. It's very clear, and I have another plant. It, it actually turned out to be the plant that, um, remember someone asked me to do a comparison with a plant with a wick and a plant without a wick? That's the plant without the wick. So, I mean, it looks healthy. So, and the other, and the other one, you'll see it when you, when you see it. I, I know that I've mentioned pH before and shown you guys what I use for that, um, the pH test kit that I use. I will do my best, Lori, to do an actual demonstration of how I make my plant water, how I mix it up, and how I check the pH and what I do with that. I will do that on a future episode. So that's a good idea. Thank you for sharing that. And then Lori also asked, she said, I, she says, so I spotted Cabbage Patch in a local nursery last week. Now, Cabbage Patch is an older variety. It was hybridized by Ethel, the late Ethel Champion. And then Lori actually um, left the description of the plant and also put, um, uh, she had found uh, Ethel's um, uh, obituary and uh, Ethel passed away. She passed away a few years ago. I had the honor to meet her briefly once at National. Um, I think, I want to say it was 10 years ago now. It was a long time ago. It was when the last time National was in Washington, D.C., and I met her there just, you know, to shake her hand. And, um, it was really um, exciting to meet her. She's She had hybridized so many beautiful plants. And Lori asked about Cabbage Patch, and she said, she said, it doesn't have a date in first class two. Is there a way to cross check the MVL, which is the AVML, the African Violet Master List, to see when it first turned up? Is it considered a vintage yet? Um, well, I did check the AVML, Lori, and there is nothing further there in terms of a date. That would be a question to ask Joe Bruns, who is the keeper of the AVML. So um, I'm happy to email him and I will ask him. He, he is the person who would be most likely to have that information to, to know if that plant would be considered vintage or not. And I'll see what I can find out this week for you. Then Linda in Oregon, I keep putting this down, I should just hold on to it, I suppose. Linda in Oregon said, I have a million questions since I am a newbie, but we'll stick with a couple to begin with. First, how do you put holes in the solo cups? And I think you mentioned something about a soldering iron and where do you get the wonderful tweezers with the bent tips that you use? Linda, I do use a soldering, uh, soldering iron. I got it, I think, at the Home Depot uh, on an earlier episode. I'm not sure which one. I'll have to go back and see if I can 
figure that out. I am. Um, I did uh, show that show how I did that, and uh, really, it's just I heat the soldering iron up. I can do like three cups at a time, and then I just put it through three times on the bottom. I make I make three holes in the bottom of each little cup, and that works really well. Um, and the tweezers, my bent nose tweezers that that I use that I really like, I got them from um, the Violet Showcase, which is in Englewood, Colorado. It's just south of, of Denver, and uh, they have a website, and I will link to that in the show notes. They have good supplies. I get a lot of supplies, pots, things from them, and they have a, if I'm not mistaken, a starter kit um, that I think has what they call a sucker plucker and it has the bent nose tweezers and also the um, the paintbrush that you're gonna see um, in some footage shortly that's where I got the paintbrush it came in that it was like a little starter beginner kit for grooming it's a great deal I hope that's helpful um, Susan left a comment and said well she said something very nice and in fact more than one person said this they said this podcast is so addictive. I have withdrawal spells midweek waiting for the next episode. Thank you very much. That's really nice. She says, I'm glad to hear you are having a cleanup show. Could you show how to clean the different kinds of leaves in that episode? Thank you again for another great show. You're welcome, Susan. And I am um, in Tips and Treasures today. I'm going to show you the first part of some footage that I, that I filmed last week um, that was cleanup footage. So hopefully that will cover what you were wanting to know. And actually, I was gonna show you guys the whole thing, but it was long, it's in two big long pieces. And so you left me these great questions and I didn't wanna, you know, I, I didn't wanna let them go for a week, so I put the second half of the footage off till next week. So the first, well, you'll see in a minute. I don't, I wanna keep going with our questions. Liz left a question and she says, hi, Adrian, can you explain what makes up a collection for show purposes? Thank you. Another informative and fun show. Thanks for your dedication to all your viewers. Well, you're very welcome. And what a great question. You know, this is another of those things that I say without thinking because I think, oh, everybody knows what that is, but not everybody does. So a collection for show purposes. Um, most often when I'm talking about a collection and when I, last week when I was sharing with you that I had an AVSA standard collection. I, an AVSA, there are, in every AVSA judged show, there is a class for an AVSA standard collection, and then there is a class for an AVSA either semi-miniature or miniature collection. And a collection is three plants of the same type. So three standard violets or three semi-miniature violets or three miniature violets. And then the one thing that has to be consistent in the AVSA classes is that each of these three plants must be a registered variety. You can also have, um, an, you could have three trailers uh, they could be three semi-miniature trailers or three standard trailers or three miniature trailers. Uh, there's also a class uh, often, and, and now this is actually relatively new in the last couple of years, there is also always a class for species. And that would be an AVSA species class. And again, three species. And for species, they, as long as they are species, they can be of any type. So there are some shows and some organizations that have other collections. Uh, for example, in Illinois, we have something called the McGill Cup Award, and that is a collection of plants. And in, in, in the case of the McGill Cup, it's five plants, and uh, they don't have to be registered, but they all have to be of the same type. If I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm speaking without a copy of an old schedule in front of me. But so different um, clubs have different things. I know in California, uh, when we had our, our council show in Southern California, there was a collection class for a California hybrids. And so if you had three plants that were hybridized by a California hybridizer, they could be entered in that class. So 
I hope that um, you can get all, all the information about AVSA classes in the AVSA handbook. I'll link to that in the show notes. It's a great question. Thank you for asking. Then I have more questions. This is great. Um, Robin in California said, I too am addicted to these podcasts. Thank you very much. Um, can't wait for the next episode. She says, with no AVSA club close by, I don't have much incentive to grow for show and just enjoy the blooms when I can get them. I wince when I see you disbudding your collection. I know there are other reasons to disbud, but I live to walk into my violet chamber greeted by the cacophony of colorful blooms. Do you ever let your violets bloom with no show goal just for your own pleasure? I do once in a while. It depends. I for a while I I had scaled my collection back substantially a number of years ago, and I used to um, I had a, a party at Christmas a few years, uh, you know a few different years, and I had invited a lot of my friends and people who knew I grew violets. So at Christmas time I would often actually put them on a pre-show schedule for twelve weeks before the before the party so that the stands would be plants would be in bloom on the stands when people were here because they really wanted to see them um i let the big box violet come into bloom as it wishes to and oftentimes when a plant is new to me and it is just uh, coming into bloom for the first time i will let it bloom so that i can see if it's going to bloom true for me um, but truthfully, I really am a show grower. I grow my plants with a show in mind usually. I mean, that's always my end result is a, hope, is a show hopeful plant. So I don't do that as often as probably you do. But there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's wonderful if they are blooming for you and they give you great joy. I mean. What's not to like a beautiful blooming plant in your house? And they, they'll bloom all year long. You know, they'll bloom at any time, not just in the summer. So that's one of the great things about having African violets, whether or not you grow them for show. Well, I have one more question here and it's from Joy. And she says, this is off topic, but I'm wondering if you have any experience using worm castings. I do not. She says, I've been watering an African violet using a tea made from worm castings for about three months now. I haven't been able to get an African violet fertilizer yet. And the plant looks healthy with a big head of blooms. However, the newer leaves are no longer the dark red, dark green with red backs that they came in from the florist. Instead, they are a bright lighter green without red backs. I don't know the proportions of, of MPK for worm castings, but do you have any ideas what happened? Thanks and looking forward to more podcasts. Joy, this is a very good question. I do not have any experience with worm castings, but I have heard that many people use them. But if you are seeing a substantial change in your plant, that leads me to believe that maybe something is not very balanced with that. Uh, so it, also, the first question you always want to ask yourself when something seems to be not right is when was the last time you repotted and what are you using to repot with? If you are using a commercial mix such as miracle Grow that already has fertilizer in it, you don't want to be adding more fertilizer on top of that, which um, if you know there is, I mean, if worm castings is a fertilizer of, of, of a sort. So Think about when the last time you repotted was. If it's been longer than six months, you may want to think about repotting and, uh, and seeing how the plant does moving forward. Uh, again, there are ways to check the pH of your soil. Um, you can get test kits. Um, I used to have one. It's been many years since I've actually tested the pH of my soil. But um, I will look and see if I see any, if I can find any online to link to in the show notes for you in case you would like to have that information. Well, those were all the questions that I had on the website. So thank you all for leaving them. And please know that you can leave questions at any time. I do try to keep the last, uh, the last week of the month for question day. But you know what? If we have questions, 
you know I'm going to answer them whenever I can. Well, it's time for tips and treasures. And today, I mean, last week I, I told you that I was going to share some cleanup film with you. And after, uh, after the podcast last week, when I was finished with it, I was, I did spend some time, uh, doing some real cleanup and the footage you're going to see is the first half of that footage. The, the show grooming piece of that footage, I'm going to save for next week so that you can see it then because the two of them together, I would, the podcast would have been so long. It would have just been way too long. So I split it up and so that also that I, so I could answer your questions today. So let's go now to my kitchen and uh, you'll see this footage and I'll see you on the other side. Hi everybody, I'm here in my kitchen and uh, it's Sunday and I am, I, these are some of the plants that were out in the sunroom on that top shelf and I just want you to see the process of these have been potted up, you know, individually now for a few weeks and it's time for them to have a little bit of cleanup. So I'm going to start with this one. Now I tried to get the light in here as good as I can. This is Max Glacial Grape and I have, um, which you can't see, but I have it over here, my, um, my laptop with first class two on it so that I can see that what kind of a plant this is. And this is a semi-miniature. So it's, this is the crown and it is looking pretty good, but you can see we've got all these kind of wonky, they are really immature leaves. They never got, they were the initial leaves. They never got beyond where they needed to be. You can see that the, the center crown leaves now are really looking scalloped. And, and that is one of the description, this, the descriptors of this particular, there, the light's a little better there, isn't it? Um, descriptors of the foliage of this plant. So what I'm going to do is just take these leaves off. A good thumbnail is always helpful for this. Now, do you see already the difference that made in the symmetry of this plant? What I'm also going to do is my handy dandy paintbrush is I'm just going and I'm the leaves are resting I think I think you guys have seen me do this before but it's probably many weeks ago maybe many months ago now just give it a little brush so that one's done this is Jersey snowflake so let me see if I can if I have that one in here I hope I do and I do Jersey, Jersey snowflakes plural this is a standard and it's um it is variegated so it's growing well and you can see that here in the crown the variegation is just starting to appear and this leaf is really the only one that i'm going to take this one does have some dirt on it and so i'm going to clean it up this is something that i look for a lot when i'm when i'm judging because dirt on the leaves is something that we have absolute control over. Dirt, animal hair, all that stuff can be taken care of. Okay, this is a species. This is House of Amani, and it's trying to bloom. I don't want it to bloom yet, so I am going to remove this blossom stalk and there's another one in there and there's another one over here I just want this to grow for a while it's not ready to bloom yet there we go wow it's really got a lot of it's really I'm trying to go to town uh oh I got a leaf and it was a good one Sometimes that happens, you guys. You gotta be careful. I was, I went too quickly. But there's some leaves here. They are older, they are marred, they don't look that great. And I am going to remove them. I'm trying to stay in the light 
so that you guys can see me. I, I think the light is probably better downstairs on my potting bench, but I just felt like I wanted to stay up here today. All right, this is a little off kilter, but I am going, well, I could take that one, but I'm gonna leave it for now and let this one continue to grow. Okay, so here we have Jean-Pierre Croteau. And we talked about this one a while ago. It is trying to grow. You can see these little immature leaves. Well, they're not doing anybody any favors at this point. So I'm gonna remove them because all they do is suck up a little bit of energy from the plant that could be better. And now we'll just let that one grow. See, this is a pretty quick process. This is Gala Pink. And it's a standard, I looked it up before we started, and it's got a lot of stuff that needs to come off. This one needs to come off. This one. And this one. And as soon as I do that, I think you can see that it begins to shape up a little better. Now, it's also trying to bloom, so I don't want it to bloom. Not yet. I know you can't see this part, guys, because it's under these leaves. But Now, this plant now has a little bit of a neck, but it's really not enough for me to, to change it out of this pot, because it just got potted into this pot in December. But it's looking a whole lot better already. So, was that interesting? I hope it was interesting and I hope it was informative. And I wanted to show these to you close up. This is a one inch paintbrush. It is a synthetic brush and it is very, very soft. This is the brush that I use. I take one with me to show. This is the brush that I use and this is the brush that came from the Violet Showcase in Colorado. These are my bent nose tweezers. These also came from the Violet Showcase in Colorado. So I, I do recommend them. This is a, it's one inch, it's not real big. It, actually, this is the perfect size. So I just wanted to really get those close so that you guys could really see them. So, well, it's time to get the bail money ready. And of course, as you know, I'm probably gonna say this every week, it is it show all the national information for the show, everything is happening, it's all on the website. And, uh, and this week, um, I, I mean, I won't go over the schedule with you again, I, I mean, and the, uh, the registration stuff, but it's there, and if you're gonna go, go ahead and register, it's going to be a lot of fun. And this is, week nine of the pre-show schedule that I used, Pauline Bartholomew's pre-show schedule. And it says, increase light time by one hour to 13 hours. I did that this week. And disbud heavily variegated varieties and double varieties for the last time. Continue to disbud all other varieties and continue Bloom Booster fertilizer. So that's what I'll be doing this week. And uh, there we go. So it's time, actually, I skipped the, did I skip the look on the stands? What's wrong with me? It was being out in the snow. Guys, let's go take a look at what's on the stands. I'll be right back. Okay, here we are in the guest room taking a look at the top shelf and by next week you guys these are going to look different these shelves are going to be um, changed up a little bit because i am going to also i've got some plants here on the pre-show schedule for illinois but national is coming and i'm looking forward toward that and uh we'll be uh shifting things around and i'll be showing you two different types well two different times in the pre-show schedule. Anyway, everything's looking pretty good up here. I have one trailer that is going to go away. Um, it's sushi. It is just not, 
you know, it's one of those things where it's when in doubt, throw it out. It's this one. And although it might look okay on camera, it just doesn't seem to be growing well for me now. And um, that's always something that I, that, you know, I pay attention to. Let's go down to the basement. Here we are down in the basement. And uh, here's this tray. You can see one down there on the end. It's called Lion's Fireworks. And I am going to let it bloom. It's ready to bloom. Empty tray. I'll tell you why in a minute. Here is this tray. And here's the plant that I said was haloing. And let me see if I can get it in the light for you to see. Um, there, I'm not sure what's going on here. There might be two plants. There might be a sucker in here. But you can see that this plant does not look good. I mean, this is when I talked about haloing this very light um, edge around these leaves this is not normal I'm not sure what's up with that and it's very interesting because this is the plant you remember someone asked me to do a plant without a wick and this is the plant without the wick and this is E.K. Princessa Grazza that is a Russian variety and I think I've got another one down here somewhere hold on let me um let me take a quick look i'll be right back okay guys this is down on the second shelf and i do indeed have another plant of this this is it now this one has the wick it was growing upstairs it's the one that didn't seem to like the cold upstairs it is haloing a little bit but not as much as the other one I can look at them together so the fact that they are both, both haloing tells me that this could be how this plant grows. I've never grown this variety before, but I'm not sure. It does make me a little nervous. I am going to watch these both carefully. I'm taking this back down to this shelf. And in fact, I'm going to move this one down here as well. Oops, don't turn that. We'll all get vertigo. <laughs> And uh, we'll see how they do going forward. Um, I will likely repot this one. Uh, everybody else down here looks pretty good. So now back up top and we go over, oh, hey, where is the dome tray? Well, guys, I don't know. Can you see over there my messy potting bench? There's the dome tree, and I'll take you over there in just a moment. Let's look at the baby stand. Well, here are the cinnabarina, or the... Uh, Smithianthus cinnabarina is what I'm actually trying to say. And I'm, as I've said before, I'm a little bit disappointed um, in these because they are not blooming or growing the way I've been, I've seen them grow. Uh, here's my Apicia. I don't know, it doesn't seem as happy as, as it might. Let's take a quick look here. It is trying to bloom again. It doesn't need a drink. It's curling down, which does lead me to believe that it might not like the temperatures here. Um, they really, they like to be warm. They really do. And this is the warmest place in the house right now at this time of year. Um, in the summer, I'll take it upstairs if it makes it, and I'll let it grow in the sunroom, which will be nice and warm in the summer. Let's walk over to the potting bench. Alrighty, I've just kind of tilted the dome up. Actually, ah, I'm knocking everything over. Sorry about that. Uh, here's the tray. And it's over here because it. when I'm doing the look on the stands, it's Saturday. And I am about to separate these babies and uh, pot them up. And uh, we'll see what we get. I am looking at some of these with an eye toward nationals. Some of them are a very good size already, like this one. This is called Rose Garden. I think it's an older variety. Um, I, and for national, I'm looking, I'm trying to see what that is, and I don't have my glasses on. This is called Watermelon Bay. This is another one that I, I think is a semi, that might be possible. Some of these are standards, some of them are semis. Um, might even have an occasional mini in there, but we'll see. And uh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see what happens. I've got a little time. Uh, until June and uh, so cross your fingers 
And over here is Pink Pussycat. And you know what? It has really held its own coming after it came back from Tulsa. So I am going to clean it up, and it's going to be a show hopeful probably for National. Let's go upstairs to the sunroom. Here is the, Gis the Gisneri shelf, and you can see now that this Columnia Apollo is... That one got stuck. <laughs> it is really in bloom, and it's beautiful. It's bright yellow, and here is really beautiful, beautiful red blossom on, whoa, on Firebird. And beautiful purple blossom over there on Moonlit Velvet. So far, it is still standing up straight. Here's the Escananthus. And there's my other strep, Texas hot chili. Let's take a look up here. Well, everybody else up here looks pretty happy. Kind of looking good. Do have a standard over there that's about ready to come into bloom. That is uh, a plant, alliance plant called Grape Glory. And I'm letting it come into bloom. Let me come over here and whoa, we'll take a better look. I am going to let this one come into bloom because I'd like to see if it's blooming true. This plant is going to be, um, we have a special class in the Illinois show and it won't be this year, but next year, this is the plant that was chosen as the Helen, Helen uh, Rhodes plant. And so I'm hoping that it's going to grow well and that it's going to bloom true. It's looking pretty good. I guess I didn't tilt that so that you guys could see it, but it is looking quite nice and everybody else is looking pretty good there's my champagne one of the champagne pinks there are two plants in that little pot as there are in this one on the back end of the shelf and both are growing quite well I'm very pleased with them and let's go take a look at the big box violet oh yeah it's blooming and it's sending up another bloom stalk right over here it's just great isn't it I, I didn't pull any leaves off of it you could tell it's bumping up now against the plastic. I just sort of have left it alone and it, and it just seems to be so happy here. It's just great. All right, that's the look at what's on the stands this week. I'll be right back. Hi, okay, I'm sorry I got us all out of border. I'm discombobulated. That's what the snow did to me, I guess, and these really cold temps. Anyway, I'm sorry that uh, things are a little out of order, but I, I'm sure you won't be too irritated with me because you did get to see what's going on on the stands. And as I said, things are going to be changing up a little bit on the stands because I'm getting ready to, uh, I kind of went through my plants. I printed out my list from first class two and I went through everything on the stands, which was a good exercise because I found some things that somehow I had missed uh, tracking in first class too. So I've added them to my list and uh, and I'm, one plant went away as you saw sushi. It just was not looking right and, and you know sometimes there's no real there's nothing you can really put your finger on but the more you grow and the more experience you have growing and knowing how things grow for you generally speaking in your conditions you just kind of get that feeling that something's not quite right. So I let that one go. And I have plenty of other plants. As you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. So, but I did come up with a good list of semi-miniatures and a couple of miniatures I think that I have. And uh, I'm going to look at them for both Illinois and for National. And I'll make some de decisions about that in the next week. And uh, we'll see what happens. So now it is time to keep moving forward. Uh, I hope that your days are going to be filled with all the things you love this week. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for the great questions. And thank you for the wonderful compliments that you left for me this week on the website. It really made me feel great. So thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying the podcast, that you are coming back week after week. Obviously, you're telling your friends. And, um, and so I really thank you for that. And, uh, and, I, and I hope to see you next week. So again, I hope your days are filled with all the things you love. 
keep growing, and I will see you next time.